We're so glad that you're here with us. So let's begin. All right. Thanks for being here. We've got a big group here. I know there's a lot of people with their cameras off, and that's okay. I hope you're not sleeping. Um, we got Ruby, Leslie, Miriam. So I wanted to start off today, uh, well first I just wanted to say thanks for listening to me. Hopefully I'm not too boring. I don't have any clips, so I'd like to get you guys engaged just a little bit. So if you guys kind of give me your feedback when I ask a question, that would be really fun. Uh, to start off, if you're open to it, we can do a little fun visualization. So I'll have you close your eyes, and I'll let you know when to open your eyes. We're just going to play a little game uh, here real quick. So you got your eyes closed. Just imagine there is a time machine there. You have a time machine. You get into your time machine, and you set the date to go back, let's say, a few thousand years in the past. So you go 3,000 years into the past, you step out of your time machine, and you're looking around. So let's just imagine you see a primitive town there. So I just want you to imagine these people, kind of, what do you see them doing? How do you see them interacting? What does their village look like? So now, let's say that you go up to one and you convince a person to come back with you. So you take this person into your time machine, and you come to present day. So now this person steps out of your time machine and they're looking around and you're introducing them to San Antonio. So I what I want you to do is I want you to kind of put yourself in the shoes of this, we'll call this person a primitive person since you know they don't have technology and that kind of thing. But the question I have for you, you can open your eyes now, if anybody even close their eyes. But um, the question I have for you is, what kind of things do you think this person do you think would feel as weird? Somebody from 3,000 years ago all of a sudden seeing modern day society. Can I get maybe one or two people to chime in? Maybe just, I guess you can just unmute yourself because I don't think I'm able to see anybody's hand. I think uh, we use utensils and then everything is cooked. And before it was, everything was raw. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Utensils. I don't know if they, I wonder, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they didn't have that, but okay. Cool. Maybe one more. People drive cars. Transportation. Okay. People drive cars, transportation. Okay. Those are good. Okay. We'll cut it there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that might seem like a weird vis visualization and you might be wondering why I had you guys do that, but um, I've been training now for a long time, personal training, so it's been over 16 years, and a lot of that time I've been in the gym. And one of the things that I always thought was kind of weird was the idea that everyone assembling into a building and moving things around without an outer objective. So that might be a little confusing because you might be like, well, well, Paul, you know, when you work out, I have an objective. But that's a personal objective for your body. But what I mean is you're not building anything. So maybe an analogy I'll give you is let's say that you have a friend that lives a mile away. And I doubt we do that any, anymore. But let's just say you have a friend that lives a mile away and you walk or jog to your friend's house. I'm guessing most of you would say, I went to my friend's house. You know, you wouldn't say that you worked out. But if you step on a treadmill and you travel a mile for no reason, there's no objective, then you say you work out. You know, I'm watching people in the gym pick up heavy things and they say, yeah, I worked out, I, I deadlifted something. But if you were to pick a, pick a couch up, no one really says they worked out, they just said I picked up a couch. So I, I see this interesting separation and I imagined communicating with a primitive person, I think they would find that bizarre. They say, well, like, what are you doing? Like, you go to a gym and you move things around without a reason? So that's what prompted me to start Workout Help Out, was trying to merge those two phenomena. So just based off the name and that little story that I gave you, Workout Help Out, can anyone give me any guess on what you think Workout Help Out is, just out of curiosity? I know it's weird, right? <laughs> that working out helps you out? <laughs> I don't know. 
working out helps you out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Um, so I'll give you, I'll give you kind of like a rough premise of what workout help out is, and I'll go into it in a little bit more detail so you guys can get a little bit more clear. But, uh, basically what workout help out is, is we combine exercise and volunteering into one event. That way, whenever people come out, they feel like they've worked out and they feel like they've helped out. So we're capturing a little bit of that energy that you would, let's say, just, you know, I'm, I'm using the word waste in the sense of you're, you're burning calories, but only for yourself. So we're capturing some of those calories and you're burning them for a reason now to help the community. So uh, before I kind of get into the specifics of what workout help out is, I, uh, I kind of wanted to briefly touch on one of the major reasons why I think workout help out would be really good for a lot of people, especially young people. So I have a question for you and you don't need to answer this. I mean, you can if you want, but do you think that people are more depressed in modern society, like right now, present day? Or do you think they were more depressed back in the day? Now. Now? Yeah, absolutely now. Okay. Yeah, normally when I ask that question, like overwhelmingly, almost everybody says, yeah. I mean, people are way depressed, more depressed now. And it's kind of hard to know because we didn't have, let's say, those statistics back in the day. But I think, I think most of us kind of intuitively understand mel mental illness is just a lot more than it, than it ever was in the past. So we can kind of debate on what, what those reasons are, but today I wanted to give you four things that you can do that can really help with mental illness and can really help just with your overall satisfaction in life. So one of those things is exercise. So, you know, I can cover each, I'm going to give you four things and I can kind of go into detail on each of these things, but I'm just going to quickly just brush over them. But just moving your body is huge. When you, when you move your body, your body releases endorphins and that's like a painkiller uh, to your body. So it can actually help reduce pain. Uh, scientists say that it helps release what they call hope molecules. So all these things lend to an overall sense of well-being. Uh, another thing the second thing is being part of a group. And I think all of us have this sense of wanting to belong to something. You know, that's, that, that's one of the big reasons why you see people get involved in gangs and things like that, because they're trying to belong to a group. And when you belong to a group, your brain releases oxytocin. And oxytocin uh, is referred, referred to as a love hormone. So, you know, it's a powerful chemical that can really improve uh, the, the way that you feel. The third thing is serving. And I know in today's society, there's a lot of emphasis on self-care and me. And I'm not, saying that there, I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just saying I feel like we've kind of neglected the fact that when you give back and serve and help somebody else, even if you look at it selfishly, it helps you. When you do that, your brain re releases dopamine. And dopamine is another one of those feel-good chemicals. And then finally, the last thing is getting out in nature, getting exposed to the sun. So, you know, just when sun hits your skin, your body releases vitamin D or makes vitamin D. And there's a whole hormone cascade that happens there. Even if, let's say, you're afraid of letting the sun hit your skin, just allowing the, the light from the sun to, to enter in your eye uh, will release serotonin, and that's a, that's a powerful mood stabilizer. So you might be wondering, well, Paul, why are you bringing all this up? I thought we are going to talk about a, you know, a volunteer organization. That's true, but what I wanted to get at is, is you got about 90% of people, 90, more than 90% of people, say that they want to give back. When you, when you survey people, people always say, yeah, I, wanna, I really want to give back. I want to serve. When you, when you, uh, ask people, they, most people will say, man, I, I need to exercise more. They say more than 80% of people actually need to be exercising more. Uh, they say about, about half of the people in the United States are vitamin D deficient. Anyway, I bring those things up because typically when you ask somebody, well, why aren't you doing those things that can really help you? Typically, the number one response is, I don't have enough time, right? 
<laughs> so what if we could somehow combine those things? What if you could just knock them all out in one shot? And I know you're busy. You might have different motivations. I know that you guys are teachers and you're working hard. And, um, you know, some of you might be experiencing depression, anxiety, those kind of things. And I'll tell you this, those things I just went over are extremely powerful. And I know sometimes, you know, uh, maybe doing those things for yourself might be a little bit of a grind, let's say, but even if you just want to represent and you want to, you want to be a good role model to the younger people, um, I think workout help out is a great thing because you're going to hit on all of those things. And that's why when we survey people over and over and over again, people just say things like, yeah, I just feel so good. Going to events makes, just makes me happy. Those kind of things. So let me, let me give you a little bit of clarity of what workout help out is. And then if you guys have any questions, just feel free to ask because I know there is a lot of confusion around what Workout Help Out is. So it's a nonprofit organization, and we do at least one event a month at the minimum. Almost always our events are on Saturday, from typically from 10 to 12. So it's two hours. So one of the benefits of Workout Help Out is the investment is very low it's only a couple hours a lot of other volunteer opportunities it's it's a longer it's a longer uh, investment of your time another cool thing about our events is they're fun and it's real easy it's real easy if you guys are interested in potentially participating or introducing this to a young person by the way young people can come out we have little kids that come out all the time so uh, but all you do is you go to our, our website workouthelpout.org you click join and you're not when you click join it's not like you're in all it is is you just enter your email there and we send you an email when we have an event ready so we're not gonna you know send any spam or anything like that all we're gonna do is just send you an email thank you Rachel we're gonna send you a, an email when we have an event prepared and then if you would like to go to that event you just register it's free and that's it just show up have a good time at the event, what you should expect is to meet some people, have some fun, serve. What, what does serving look like? It can be anything. We, we might be painting a fence one day. We might be shoveling some mulch another day. Uh, actually, just last, the, the event that we had last month, we were helping a teacher. We helped her move a whole room full of stuff and kind of helped her get all that stuff out. And that's all it is. And, and uh, at, the end of the, at the end of the session, you should leave feeling like you've helped out and worked out. Now, if the, like, let's say we're helping uh, an elderly person paint their walls. Well, that's not really, that's really not a workout, right? So that's where I typically would come in and run everyone through a little maybe 10, 15 minute workout. That way, when you're done, you feel like, oh, I got a little workout. And I will say, I will tell you this, when surveyed, when we survey people, um, Overwhelmingly, the number one response that we get on why people do not come to our events. Can anyone give me a guess on why somebody wouldn't come? Maybe being unmotivated. Unmotivated, okay. Yeah, that's true. There is one that's, we, we, we hear this all the time. And that is, don't I think have time. what was that? Don't have time. Time. Yeah, those are all reasons, but there's one that comes up. Social anxiety is actually the second one, Rose. That's the second reason, the most common reason why people don't come out. Um, so just know if you come out, the, one of the first things we do is we say meet three, four, or five people that you don't know. And that kind of helps break the ice a little bit and makes you feel better. And plus, you know, with, with the work I help out staff, we introduce ourselves right away and we want you to feel comfortable at events. Uh, but the number one reason why people don't come to events is because they say that they're afraid of the workout. That's the number one reason. And the reason I bring it up is because I just want you guys to feel comfortable knowing that anybody can come out really. We have elderly people that come out in their 80s. We have really deconditioned people that come out. Everything is progressed and regressed. So I know the, the, the idea of, let's say, exercising with the trainer might seem scary. But just know, everybody goes at their own pace. Everyone does what they can. Even if all you can do is just raise your hands up in the air, then that's fine. That's all you do. 
But it is important that if you come to an event that you participate in both. So real quick, I don't know where I'm, where I'm at on time, but I wanted to give you the three main ways that you all can participate with Workout Help Out. So the first way is getting involved on the volunteer side. So maybe that might involve, involve you potentially volunteering yourself. Or if you don't want to volunteer, maybe it would involve you exposing Workout Help Out to maybe a group or a person that might potentially be interested in volunteering. The second way, and this might seem kind of weird, but it's actually true, uh, is actually helping us find people who need help. So interestingly enough, that's actually one of our challenges is finding people who need help. So it could be a single parent, it could be an elderly person, it could be a wounded warrior, uh, it could be a teacher, it could be a, another nonprofit. It could be a church, a mosque, a temple. So one big way that you potentially could help is just letting us know if you know anybody or an organization that could use our help. So if you do think of anybody, just go ahead and email me. And Rachel has my email there, paul at workouthelpout.org. And then the last way is kind of simple. Just follow us on Instagram or, or Facebook. And, you know, like our stuff, helps the algorithm, share our stuff. Maybe you're not interested and you say, you know what, I'm, that's not my thing. I'm too busy or whatever. I don't want to be outside. That's fine. Uh, you could just follow us on Instagram or Facebook and just share our events. Stuff like that really helps because maybe your friends uh, might be interested. That's it for me. I think uh, I'm, I'm kind of good on time. But if you guys have any questions, if we have a quick moment, I can answer any questions that you guys have because I'm sure that, that was a little confusing. How many people usually attend a workout? Oh Help yeah, that, yeah, that's a great that's a great question. Um, in the past, that was roughly around fifty people. Since COVID happened, uh, we scaled everything down. Now our events typically around 10, 10 ish people, oh, okay. give or take. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you have to sign up? And then if there's too many people, then you redirect to another event, or how does that? Just thinking of if people are needing help. What, yeah, how, no. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So we've never turned anyone down. So let's say if you register and it's full, you'll be put on a waiting list. I'll tell you this, you can just show up. I know a guy <laughs> that works there. <laughs> and, you know, it, it, even okay. if we have, let's say, more people, because there's been events where we had more people than there was work. And all I do is I just run them through more exercises and I dilute the group down. So it's not a big deal if we have more people. But yeah, if you register, if it's full, if it's capped off, you can still be put on a waiting list and just come out anyway. Don't worry about it. Was that your question? Yes, thanks. Okay, okay cool. I volunteer at the food pantry. They are neat. Yeah, we... Uh, I will tell you this, there are some basic events that are easy for us to go to. So we, we volunteer a lot at the food bank, uh, the diaper bank, dog sanctuaries and pet sanctuaries, that kind of thing. So we typically will fall back on those if we can't find an individual. Individuals take priority ideally, but or a church or something like that. I have to put on your camera. Uh, Rachel, do I need to go or do, could they ask a, some more questions? I don't want to, I want to respect y'all's time. Thank you. No, by all means, if, uh, if anybody has any questions that they'd like to ask Paul, now's the time to do it. But I think that you know, you're know you doing wonderful work. So please, friends, ask, ask Paul while he's here what your questions are. Yeah, thank you. Are they still all in San Antonio? Yes. Workout Help Out is only in San Antonio right now. Right now, we've built the model to be able to be replicated. So that's another way. If you know anyone that lives in Austin or Houston or China and they want to do their own Workout Help Out, we can, we can coach them and show them how to run events. We'll basically you know, fought, uh, carry them and show them the ropes and how to do everything. But right now, it's only in San Antonio. So, you know, if there's somebody that needs help in Austin or somewhere outside of the city, that probably won't work. Uh, right now, since we're in San Antonio, whoever needs the help probably needs to be in San Antonio or maybe on the, the outskirts. That's a good question. Thank you. Mr. Paul, I have a question. 
Yes. I have a question. I'm trying to go somewhere quiet. <laughs> so I volunteer at a food pantry at Coker United uh, Church mm-hmm. um, here in San Antonio. And so they have a food pantry every Thursday and they feed about 350 people every week. So they are, uh, matter of fact, I just got an email. So they're always in the need of volunteers to come help bag groceries, push the carts. So they do this co- like every Thursday, even though they, they are sponsored by the food bank. So the food bank, you know, the trucks come, but they are always in need of volunteers. Is that something that y'all do or you help yeah, to find? Yeah. We, we, we can do that. Like I said, almost all our events are on Saturday, typically from 10 to 12. Oh, okay. so, sometimes we do okay. them longer, sometimes shorter. Sometimes we do it on another day. So we would be open, let's say, potentially to do one on Thursday. Okay. Um, ideally, though, that's just kind of how we run things on, you know, on Saturday. But if you <laughs> like, uh, if, you, if you will, just go ahead and email me, paul at workouthelpout.org. Let me okay. know about that. And then we can okay. potentially partner up with them. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Anybody else? Did somebody say something? Or? Did somebody have a question? All right. Raise your hand if you're sleeping. Don't lie. Come on now. No, I'm just messing around. All right. Anything else from me, Rachel? Sorry. <laughs> just checking through the chat really quickly. Um, there's a lot of interest in, in this. So thank you for being here. And friends, we're going to send you um, Paul's contact information. <laughs> no, not sleeping. Everybody yeah. really appreciates it. Um, uh, yes, we'll be sure to, to connect you. Um, I was lucky to, to meet Paul in the uh, Mayor's Fitness Council uh, monthly meetings. And so reached out and said, we want you to be part of our session to, to meet these fantastic teachers and to give us with the wonderful work that you do. So thank you for being here, Paul. We really appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. Um, I'm going to run now because I'm about to do a virtual training session at 630 if that's okay, right? You said? Absolutely. Of course. Okay. Thanks for being here. Okay. Thank you. Bye. And if you guys, any, if any questions come up, just feel free to ask me. No worries. Bye-bye. Bye, Paul. Thanks. Well, thank you, friends. Um, I just thought, what a, what a great organization, right? And there's uh, so many ways that we can all work together and help each other. And, and I thought that seemed great, too, that it's like, you know, there's so much that um, that we need help with, our friends need help with, we need help with. And it's like, well, it's still exercising, right? We're moving, we're helping. So, um, I just thought that was fantastic. So thank you friends for being there for that.